On May 18th, 2021, Ziggo, the largest Dutch cable operator, announced to the world that it would no longer control the rights for broadcasting Formula One in the Netherlands. What immediately followed was not much, because who actually spends time looking at Ziggo's Twitter feed? But after Dutch Formula One fans realized that this would mean signing up for the streaming service via play for the very unacceptable Dutch price of 14 euros per month, fans would begin to start getting angry. What made this change more notable, however, was that the Dutch weren't alone. Only a year before, Nordic Entertainment Group, the owner of Viaplay, also secured a deal that acquired them continued exclusive rights for Formula One in every single Nordic country from 2022 to 2024. This was followed by an expansion into the Baltics, pivoting off of ice hockey, as well as acquiring exclusive rights for Formula One in Poland. Their intentions? Clear. Before the end of 2023, we will expand via play from our current five Nordic markets to 10 new international markets. And we will grow our via play subscriber base from 3 million to 10.5 million in 2025. Our goal is to be the European streaming champion. Europe is not known for its streaming services. To no surprise, American media remains dominant everywhere. And as the amount of streaming subscriptions increase in Europe, Europeans continue to consume mainly American licensed content. A question to ask is if you're a European company that wants to become a streaming giant that can compete on the European market, how could you do it? You could maybe try to take a bet on an entirely new medium for mass consumption and rely on a base of consumers that are eccentric enough to get DVDs delivered through the mail. You could rely on decentralized content loaded with ads submitted by users with no social life and an inability to tell their parents they're doing something meaningful with their lives. You could rely on your globally successful brands and people's nostalgia. But you could also, of course, just be Jeff Bezos. What makes Nordic Entertainment Group the leader of the pack when it comes to European streaming companies is that it has a combination of strategies that no other European media company has been able to fully replicate. They invested in streaming services when it wasn't financially feasible to do it. They rely, and still do, on a bed of nostalgic Nordic content people across the world love to act like they consume. And probably the most important thing is that they did something Netflix hasn't. Space, and Netflix is directly going after your territory. It's opening up a, an office in the Nordics later this year in Stockholm. It's saying by the end of the year, we'll have nearly 70 original titles coming from the Nordics. So it is going after your space, whether you're from the same background or not. How will you compete with someone uh, with such a deep wallet or a deep uh, pockets as Netflix when it's making original content like this? Well, the original content uh, that, that you referred to is take time to build up. We have 129 original titles on our platform now and we're stepping up and we're moving into producing content in other territories as, as, uh, as well. Uh, what we do have that Netflix don't have, and I do think that the different uh, sort of backgrounds matter, is that we have a long history of producing world-class sports productions. Uh, and we've moved that over to streaming and we produce more than 50,000 live hours of sports. And that's a very different platform experience. And that allows us to move into, into new territories uh, in a different way where Netflix and, and other globals don't compete. Sports are a form of entertainment that has historically been sticky and remained a domain of linear TV. Live sports rights are not cheap after all, and a lot of exclusive sports streaming deals operate at a loss while mainly being used for advertising the larger streaming service. Live streaming sports is difficult to do, and re-watching sports would not be as common as doing the same for popular TV shows. This is why some companies will package sports into documentary style content that can stay relevant, profitable for longer periods of time. It's this investment into sports content, even though it would seem like it would only produce losses, that separates Nordic Entertainment Group. They've taken a bet on inelastic demand. Dedicated Formula One watchers will go to where Formula One is being shown, even if it means paying a higher price and Nordic Entertainment Group will then try to keep them with original content that they hope will be more profitable in each respective country. Dutch viewers will now be given their own via play original version of Dragon's Den, alongside others, Polish viewers, Polish murderesses, and Estonians to who shot Otto Mueller. Max Verstappen also announced, along with his father, a multi-year content partnership with Viaplay to produce documentary-style content even when he originally rejected working with Drive to Survive because of its supposed sensationalism. The reason for paying an insane amount to get Verstappen is simple. With almost a cult-like following, 
by acquiring him to produce exclusive content, Nordic Entertainment Group can try to turn skeptical Formula One motivated potential Dutch subscribers into enthusiastic ones. In 2018, EU officials slapped on a directive to try and encourage American streaming companies to uphold some form of minimum European content. However, EU directives are practically always legally obscure because it's encouragement by the EU for each member state's own specific legislation rather than a concrete requirement for what they have to do. And either way, the directive may not even be that necessary. As subscriber growth stalls in America, streaming services will then try and compete for international markets by also producing original content in other countries. For Europhiles, this may seem like a good thing in itself. But again, there are nuances. Where do the borders for what is European content begin and end? The French have been advocating for an even larger percentage of, air quotes, European content. But people know France. There is no other European country probably as culturally anxious about Anglo-Saxon content. It's part of the reason some Europeans see the European efforts by the French as merely a Trojan horse. Is the 60% French requirement of European content automatically the same as 60% European content? Or is it merely a means for boosting the French? It leads to an interesting question. Is content originating from Europe important in itself? It's a question I'm not qualified to answer because I know nothing, and I ironically have way too much of an American accent. But it's one you can try to by spending your valuable fleeting conscious time getting angry on the internet. <laughs>